So back in June, I was asked to speak about an incident that had occurred at one of our local schools where a uh, teacher was showing a transgender affirming video to eighth graders. And this was done without parental notification or permission. And so I was asked to kind of come in and address the board to speak about the inappropriateness of this, that number one, children at this age should not be exposed to this, but also that their brain architecture cannot assimilate this kind of information and the type of psychic damage that this could do. Transgenderism is a very abstract concept and eight-year-olds think in black and white. And so when you're saying somebody is non-binary or you're neither a boy or a girl, it, it, it creates kind of a, a psychic crisis for these children. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Our Watch. I am Tim Thompson, and we've got a very important topic to discuss today. And to do that, we've got a very important guest, and this is Dr. Shawnee Anderson. Dr. Shawnee, uh, glad to have you on the program. Thank you, Tim. It's nice to be back. Yeah, we've uh, we've been doing a lot of stuff um, that we're both in the fight, and God connected us a while back through a, a mutual friend, uh, Pastor Rob McCoy, and uh, been watching all that you've been doing. You certainly are in the fight. Uh, tell our audience today that, that may not know who you are, who you are, and what you do. Sure. I'm a clinical and forensic psychologist. I have a private practice in Thousand Oaks, California. And um, I've actually been in the freedom fight for about two and a half years when the churches and the schools and everything went on lockdown. I started speaking at my church through a uh, fireside chat that went nationally and then again at rallies and a number of different speaking engagements, speaking about the mental health effects of the lockdown. And most recently, I've been speaking about what's going on in our schools with the sexualization and the focus on the LGBTQ focus and the transgender agenda. Yeah, and we appreciate that you're bringing your expertise to that issue. I've I've actually been up in your area quite a bit, even you know for years before COVID, talking about the uh, the sexualization, you know, the indoctrination that's taking place in the government-ran schools. I've spoke at the Caneo Valley uh, School Board meetings multiple times. I've watched their agenda. You can see they have a very clear agenda, and that is to cut out the conservative parents from their kids' lives um, to bring this type of indoctrination to the, the school. And, and to me, it's a huge frustration. So you were brought in to the Caneo Valley uh, School Board meeting to, to talk. What was your experience there? Well, you're absolutely right. And I do want to say thank you, Tim, because I know that you've been on the forefront of speaking out at school boards for years. And, and we so appreciate that you have spearheaded this whole movement. But um, I was actually raised in the Caneo Valley and I was part of the Caneo Valley Unified School District. And I actually moved back there when I had my son and my son went through school there as well. And so back in June, I was asked to speak about an incident that had occurred at one of our local schools where a uh, teacher was showing a transgender affirming video to eighth graders. And this was done without parental notification or permission. And so I was asked to kind of come in and address the board to speak about the inappropriateness of this, that number one, children at this age should not be exposed to this, but also that their brain architecture cannot assimilate this kind of information and the type of psychic damage that this could do. Transgenderism is a very abstract concept and eight-year-olds think in black and white. And so when you're saying somebody is non-binary or you're neither a boy or a girl, it, it, it creates kind of a, a psychic crisis for these children. And so I, I went before the board and really kind of expressed, number one, a little bit of some empathy and understanding where they're coming from that I believe for the most part, I was a little naive, I think, um, acknowledging that they have a sensitivity to what's going on in these children, but I wanted to let them know what's going on to the other children who are being exposed to this, but also that there is a hyper focus on sexualization, on gender, on sexuality, um, to the point that I believe it is harming those individuals who maybe have issues around sexual trauma, eating disorders, identity issues, and they're all being thrown into the one basket 
of transgenderism. And afterwards, I was called a hater, um, transphobic, and kind of all hell broke loose after that. Man, I, I'm sorry that you've had to go through that. You know, it's it's one of those things where when you do step up to to stand for what is good and true and right, you, you find that that people don't like that. You know, the 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 fact is, um, truth it, it overcomes the lie, and so the lie hates the truth. Uh, anybody who's a truth teller, uh, they're, they're not going to like that. And you, you're you brought to them a professional view on this topic you said their brains weren't ready for this at that age it's not appropriate what is it about their age i mean as a as a medical professional um or as a as a you know as a doctor what is it that you're saying is is that they're not ready for it? why is it that they're not ready for it children at that age again do not have what is called abstract thinking and abstract thinking is when you can think in the gray. Usually that starts to occur at about puberty and through adolescence where you begin to recognize that there's a grayness to life. And that up until about puberty adolescence, children only can think in black and white. So things are either good or bad. Things are boy, girl. And so when you try to mesh the two together and create a grayness, children truly cannot grasp that because their brains have not been fully formed. So you bring your licensed professional opinion to the the school board. You get attacked, uh, your your credibility and, and really, I mean, talk to us about that attack. What happened to you? Well, that night wasn't pretty. As I said, there was a lot of um, booing and hissing and name calling and a lot of things. But what happened um, that was really um, very injurious and hurtful was a week later when I was actually preparing to speak at another school, the same school board, but they had another meeting that evening. I found out that afternoon that an individual who is a transgender activist who has very close ties with the school board had um, filed a 51 page complaint to my board. Um, in addition to submitting this to my board that holds my license, she also sent it to our state assemblywoman, the Federalist, or I guess you call it United States Congresswoman, the city attorney, the school su superintendent, and the entire city council. And within this 51 page document, she basically alleged that I was, to quote her, an imminent threat to the parents and children of the school district, as well as all of the individuals in the city and the county, that I am dangerous, that anybody who attempts to do therapy with me is at risk for death. She claimed that I was a white supremacist and a whole bunch of other things that are so toxic that I actually couldn't even completely read the entire complaint because it's so egregious. Wow. You know, it, it sounds to me like a, a defamation case here, you know, um, unbelievable to call somebody like you the, the threat. And this is what happens. I mean, it happens to you. It happens to me. It happens to pretty much everybody you and I know that are actually stepping out and doing what's right. Um, we're the ones that are the threat. We're the ones that are bad. And we're just saying, look, this is, it just doesn't make sense. What you're doing doesn't make sense. It, there's no common sense to it. It, it, it's not good. And really what they're doing is the threat to our right. our community and that is what people who are you know they hate this country you know we we call them marxist you know that's one of their tools is is whatever it is that they are doing they accuse us of and well that's your projection it's absolutely. projection absolutely so that's what they do um and, and we just have to keep fighting this fight now um you are still you're not going to back down you're you're still in the fight and and you have a way you're going to fight back so you have something coming up in your future talk to us about what's going on with dr sean a i will well before we even get there i want to share that when i received notification of that and the fact that it had gone out to all the important elected officials in my community many that i've known honestly since i was a little girl I was absolutely mortified and I didn't think there was any way that I was going to be able to speak at the board that night, which is exactly what their purpose was. They wanted to intimidate me. They mm -hmm. wanted to bully me. They wanted to shut me down. And initially it kind of worked. I was very, very upset. But after consultation with some dear friends and some heavy prayer, 
I said, you know what, if, if I'm shut down and if I stop speaking, they win. And so I actually went back to the board that night and told them, you know, that I actually held them accountable since they support this individual and that what she was trying to do is silence me and that I wasn't going to be silenced and that they were calling me a hater. But now I truly understand hate because I've been a victim of hate. And so in response to this, I have had threats. I've had to have security walk me to my car that evening. I was followed home. Um, I've had Antifa um, tweet about me. I've, it, it's really been pretty scary. Um, but what God has done in response to this has been pretty powerful. Um, God is actually, what I say, deploying me. I'm moving out of California. I'm not fleeing, yeah. as I tell everybody, although there is quite the, uh, the urge to do so. But God is really deploying me, and I have been recruited by both Liberty University and the American Association of Christian Counselors in Lynchburg, Virginia. And I'm going to be going out there doing a number of things. I'll be teaching part time and doing some really amazing things for the American Association of Christian Counselors, such as helping spearhead the battle for Christian counselors like myself, who are under attack for counseling according to our conscience and convictions and our faith and so i'm really going to be trying to help those and really encourage those who are in the same profession that i am to actually stand up and fight this battle because i think many counselors sadly have been giving in to the dictates that we just follow what the state tells us to do because according to our state in california and biden wants to do it nationwide we are not allowed to actually counsel individuals with issues around LGBTQ. We are only allowed to affirm. And I was not trained as a psychologist to affirm. My job is to help individuals struggle and kind of figure out their issues. And some of that is confronting and, and addressing truth amidst lies. And they want to shut me down and my language, even within my patients, within my sessions with Christian patients, they're telling me how I need to do my job. Yeah. To me, it just, you hear that. And I, I it just frustrates me so much because, you know, the fact is, you know, we, we have, Variety, a variety of medical doctors. And if you go to one medical doctor and you don't like their assessment, you can just say, you know, what, I'm going to go find a different doctor. I'm going to go get a second opinion. And, you know, you'll, you can find a doctor that will treat you the way you're looking to be treated. Well, why is it that with psychologists, you can't do the same thing? How, how come all psychologists are told you have to counsel this way? Um, they're, they're shoving you into a box and let's face it. Um, the, the stuff that they're trying to, to push for is never going to bring about the mental health that a person needs. It's going to keep them trapped in, in, in a box that they might not want to be in. Well, if you look at what's going on with the push for transgenderism and that being taught starting in kindergarten, they, uh, the numbers of individuals that now believe that they are transgendered in some studies has increased by like 4,000%. Wow. And what's sad is that there's a contagion effect in young women, whereas in the past we've seen contagion with let's say eating disorders and cutting and other kinds of self-destructive behaviors. We are now seeing a number of young teenage women who struggle with self-esteem, who struggle with their body. And again, I don't know any woman who didn't struggle with her body when she was a teenager. If you say, you know, I don't like my body, I'm struggling with who I am as a woman, you are now urged to believe that you are a man and they are then bringing in these, they're drugging these young women, they're doing, you know, top surgeries, double mastectomies to these young women whose brains aren't even fully formed you know, at, as teenagers, they're doing these transgender surgeries at like 18 years old and the brain isn't fully formed until 25. And we know that up to about 85% of individuals who believe that they're transgender during adolescence change their mind later right. when their identity becomes more solidified and their brain is working fully. Right. So this is a crisis. Um, you're, you're now going to be helping to uh, stand for the Christian counselors. Um, 
we uh, we want to continue to to bring people updates of what you're doing. Uh, we're just about out of time right now for for this uh, program. But can we have you back on and talk more about what you're doing and 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 just kind of bring you on on a regular basis? Absolutely. Um, actually, through the American Association of Christian Counselors, when I move back there, we are going to be having a podcast that is going to have updates on this issue. Um, and right now it's available to anybody who is enrolled in the American Association of Christian Counselors. Um, and I, I encourage any Christian counselors now to please sign up and join the organization. And it is going to be through our ethics and advocacy division. So you can stay up to date because they came from my license. They're coming yeah. for everybody else's. Right. I'm not special. They're going to be coming for everybody. Absolutely. Well, we're going to put the the links to connect with uh, with you and connect with that organization in the comments, so that way people can connect. That's all the time we have for right now. But I want to thank you, Dr. Shawnee Anderson, for joining us today, and we're we're going to continue to pray for you. And I thank everybody for tuning in online. We'll see you next time right here on our watch with Tim Thompson.